Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Margaret Button Cow. This is an easy to crochet cow. It has an interesting stitch that appears to be like floating squares and a button closure. And these decorative holes that are created by the stitch are also used as buttonholes. So it's a very adjustable cowl. And for this project, you'll need about a skein and a half of Bernat's Softy Chunky Yarn. You'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, an eight millimeter L crochet hook, and you'll also need a button. You wanna make sure your button is large enough to hold the chunky yarn in place and not fall through, but you also want it to be able to pass through these holes easily. So let's get started. We'll move this aside and grab our yarn. We're going to begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook and bring up a loop. And then tighten it onto your hook. We have a starting chain of 26. To make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and pull it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, whoops, 24, 25, and 26. This, so this is our starting chain and you'll want it to be pretty loose, as loose as you can. If you're having trouble getting your starting chain loose enough, you can always go up a crochet hook size or two for your starting chain and then just switch back to the L for the rest of the project. That will ensure that your starting chain is nice and loose. To work row one, we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. This loop here does not count. So one, two. To work a single crochet, insert your hook into the chain and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. Next, we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then we're gonna skip three chains down here. One, two, three, and in the next chain, work another single crochet. Then chain three, one, two, three, then skip three, one, two, three, work a single crochet in the next chain. Then we'll chain three, one, two, three. Skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the next chain, work another single crochet. Then you'll chain three, one, two, three. Skip three chains, one, two, three, in the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three. Skip three chains, one, two, three. In the next chain, work a single crochet. Chain three, one, two, three, 
skip three chains, one, two, three. And in that very last chain, you'll work your last single crochet to finish off row one. So what you're gonna have is a strip of loops, so to speak, and that completes row one. To move on to row two, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work. Next, in each one of these holes we created, these are also referred to in the written pattern as the chain three spaces, because they were created by working a chain three across the top. So in these chain three spaces here, we're going to work three double crochets in each one. To work a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the space, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, work another double crochet. and another double crochet for a total of three double crochets in each chain three space. So it'll look kind of like that. If we come back to our finished piece. You can see this first little square we've created. Next, we're going to do the same thing in the next chain three space. Three double crochets. One double crochet, two double crochets, and three double crochets, all in that same space, just like that. So we'll just keep doing this all the way across. One double crochet, Two double crochets, three double crochets, next chain three space we'll work three more double crochets, that's one, two, and Three. So it's starting to look like the finished piece a little bit. We're getting some squares across our row. Next space, again, three double crochets. That's one. That's two. And three. Just like that. We pull a little more yarn here from our yarn ball. So here's the last chain three space of the row. We'll just do the same exact thing that we've been doing, three double crochets. One. Two. And three. To finish off the row, you're going to work a double crochet in the last stitch to finish off the row. So row two is complete. It should look like this and you'll have one, two, three, four, five, six squares across. To move on to row three, we're going to chain one and turn our work. Then we're going to work a single crochet in this first space here that will be on the row right before this first square. We're going to single crochet just like that. Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and then in between these two squares, in this space here, we're going to work another single crochet, and then chain three, one, two, three. 
work a single crochet in between the next two squares chain three one two and three work a single crochet in between the next two squares get some more yarn then we'll chain three one two three work a single crochet in between the next two squares chain three one two three work a single crochet in between the next two squares chain three one two and three to finish off the row you're going to work a single crochet in between the last square and the turning chain from the previous row right here and that completes row three so that created another row of these loops which will work these double crochet squares into in the next row so to finish your cowl you're just going to keep working rows two and three until the cowl is as long as you would like it to be. The finished cowl that I made measured about 10 inches wide and I made mine 30 inches long. However, you can make yours as long or as short as you want it to be. If you make yours a little shorter, it'll be more close fitting up to the neck. And if you make yours longer, it'll be a little more looser and have more of a drape. So it's really whatever you prefer. But mine measured 10 inches wide and 30 inches long if you want similar dimensions. So to keep going, again, we're going to work rows two and three until the cowl is as long as you want it to be or until you run out of yarn or 30 inches, whatever you prefer. And you'll just keep going in the same manner by working a chain three and we've created these loops again. So you'll just do the same thing. Work three double crochets in each one of these loops or chain three spaces as they're referred to in the written pattern. So I'll just do the first one just to show you because we're repeating rows two and three until the cow is as long as you would like it to be. Okay. So when we keep going, these blocks or squares or cubes or whatever you like to call them, will start creating a stacked effect. To sew your button onto your cowl, what you'll want to do is put the cowl on and figure out where you would like your button to be. I went and I sewed mine. This is the starting edge. Of the finished piece and I went about three rows up and about two blocks over. Uh, that was how it buttoned the best for me. However, trying it on your own neck and seeing where you'd like the button placed, you can see how it buttons. Um, but trying it on your own neck will be the best way to tell where you would like your own button. So we're gonna, you can use any of these holes, these decorative holes as your button holes and you can do you can bring it in closer you can come up to the edge here if you'd like it to be a little bit looser so to sew your button onto your piece you're going to take your button and again you want it to be large enough to accommodate this chunky yarn and the finished piece i have here i have like a triangular button it's pretty big and this is a coconut wood button i had on hand and the holes are pretty large to fit the chunky yarn through. And I'm just going to show you how to sew it on. This is our little practice piece. So what you're going to do is just thread your tapestry needle, put your button where you would like it to be, and then just bring the needle up through the back, bring it through. This is just a scrap piece of yarn I had left over. You're just going to go through here a few times. I usually just do twice. You can do it as many times as you feel comfortable to hold that button on. 
And I like to use matching yarn because it looks nice on the finished piece. So we just sewed our button on and you can flip it over, take your tapestry needle out, and just tie the back. Just like that. And then these ends that remain, you can just weave in the same way you uh, weaved in the other pieces. Oops, my yarn split. If you're using chunky yarn, sometimes it unravels a bit. You can just give it a fresh cut and try again. So we tied it and we're just gonna thread our tapestry needle again and weave in the ends behind the button and just do it the same way. Come in one direction, come in the other direction. Just pull that through, trim, and then you'll do the same for the other piece as well. So that's it. That's how you crochet the Margaret button cowl. And you can just button yours closed. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And be sure and click the red subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.